Cool. So we know naps are good for us, right? We know there's been a study. So it was published by Nature Neuroscience and they gave, they gave participants a test. Right? Typically during a test, your cognitive function declines the longer you stay focused on the test, right? We have limited mental energy. But what happened is they gave them a test, they started doing it, and then halfway through, they gave certain participants a uh, you know, the chance to have a 30 minute nap and other participants the chance to have a 60 minute nap and then a third group of participants no nap at all they just continued the test and the result was that cognitive function stopped declining with the people that had a 30 minute nap and it reversed with the people that had a 60 minute nap meaning the people that had a 60 minute nap were more mentally focused and able to concentrate on things and perform than the people who didn't have any nap at all and also than the people who had a 30 minute nap. So what this shows us is the ideal nap time is anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. I would argue it's probably more beneficial for most of us to have between a 10 and a 30 minute nap because you don't really, unless you practice this, you're going to end up feeling tired and actually just falling asleep and you know staying asleep and then feeling groggy when you wake up whereas the best power nap time seems to be between 10 and 30 minutes this is also what many experts agree on you know this one test happened to be 30 to 60 minutes but there are various other tests that show between 10 and 30 minutes is the ideal napping time so we know that we also know that the benefits of napping even for 10 or 20 minutes can last several hours afterwards so really it's a very good thing to do you know if you're looking for Countless people these days are looking for ways of improving their mental focus, feeling better, having more energy, and they look to things like nootropics or coffee or, you know, whatever the latest thing is. But really, it's, it still comes down to the simple things, you know, your sleep, what you eat, and what you do. So really, napping is a very cheap, effective way of getting those mental boosts without having to rely on nootropics. Now, I'm a fan of nootropics. I really am. You know, and I've, I've tried various nootropics over the years. I've got my favourites, I've got my stack. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, I don't use them unless I really need to focus on something intently for several hours at a time. And even then, over the long term, I find that sleeping well and eating right does far more for me than any nootropic does. So in terms of actually how to have a nap, right, I don't really need to give you a tutorial on that. Basically, you know how to sleep. You just lay down, get comfortable and close your eyes, right? What I will say is that don't be... Say if, you, say if you want to have a 20 minute power nap, right? That's a good amount of time to have a nap for. But most of us forget that we don't fall asleep instantly as soon as, we, as soon as our head hits the pillow. So if you, say if you block out 20 minutes to have a nap in your lunch hour, for example, it's going to take you more than 20 minutes because you've got to have maybe 10 minutes before to actually fall asleep and get comfortable. And then maybe five or 10 minutes after to sort of slowly wake up and reacclimatize to being awake. So it's going to take, for a 20 minute nap, it might take you 40 minutes total time. So that's something that a lot of people forget. Now, there is one sort of main warning about naps. One, I guess you could say one downside, right? And that is, that is that if you sleep for too long, okay, so if you sleep for long enough to enter your deep sleep state and you start convincing your body that you're actually trying to fall asleep properly, you're gonna experience what's known as sleep inertia. This is where you feel very tired because you've interrupted your deep sleep. This is what happens if you interrupt you know, your sleep in the middle of a sleep cycle or if you have a nightmare that happens to wake you up. It's not a good feeling. It can leave you feeling groggy for hours afterwards. So the way you avoid sleep inertia is you make sure you set an alarm to go off at 20 minutes. And it needs to be a loud enough alarm that it's going to instantly wake you up. Not one you can snooze through or just sleep through. That's really the only downside. Just avoid the sleep inertia. Don't sleep for more than 20 or 30 minutes and you'll be fine. Like, Although there is a stigma attached to napping, like there's this... Uh, it's cliche that people who nap are sort of lazy or they don't do as much, they just nap all the time. Well, that's not necessarily true. You know, some of the top CEOs in the world and, you know, big, high-performing people, they, although they sleep six to eight hours a day at night, they will also have a power nap during the middle of the day because often they, they're doing really long work days. You know, they're working from, say, six in the morning until nine in the evening sometimes. And a lot of them say that the only way they get through that is through meditating and taking a nap during the day. So go ahead and give it a try. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Done.